All right, guys, so what we're going to be talking about in this video is conservation of energy, right? So the first thing I want to go through um, is that there are going to be other types of energy besides kinetic energy, right, as you guys have probably seen in the slides by now. But we're going to combine this idea of multiple different types of energy um, with this idea of conservation of energy, okay? So to get started, just to recap what potential energy is, because remember, we already covered kinetic energy, right? So I'll have kinetic energy as one half mv squared. Basically, if something has mass and it's moving, okay, just any object that is moving has some kinetic energy. Now we're going to look at potential energy. Potential energy is a little bit stranger, right? So if I kind of look at an object, let's say a ball that is above the ground, okay? This object doesn't really have energy yet, right? But it could. Um, if you were holding this ball, of course, it's not moving. It can't move. It can't do anything, right? But if you let it go, right? Um, it can suddenly, it can accelerate to some final velocity. It has some energy that can be there in the future, right? So potential energy is just describing this form of energy, this future form of energy. And we have a formula for it right here. The way we'll describe it in a formula is mass times gravity times height. Okay, and you'll notice that I have a little negative here. This is because energy should always be positive. Energy does not have this little vector symbol on it, right? It does not have this, okay? So that means that potential energy is a scalar value. You either have energy or you don't. There is no directional energy. And that's actually the thing that makes energy really good to work with sometimes, um, you know, instead of something like velocity or momentum. So we've got some energy. So the way we'll describe this is we have a ball. The heavier this ball is, right, so if I make this ball, you know, even bigger, then it will have more potential energy, right? I'm going to increase mass. I'll increase my potential energy. Gravity is a constant for us, and it's always downward. You'll see gravity here is negative, so it should cancel out with this negative right here. And then my height is my height from the ground, okay? My height from the ground... It's just this value right here, we'll call this height. So the higher off the ground something is, the more potential energy it has, right? So the higher off the ground you are, you could potentially have a lot of energy, right? Specifically kinetic energy um, when you hit the ground, right? So the higher you go, the more potential energy you have. So that's just basic rundown of this formula. So we'll have some chances to um, practice this, especially we've got our exam review coming up. We'll have a few questions on potential energy, but um, for now what we're going to do is we're going to work with total energy and go into conservation of energy. So for mechanical energy, okay, total mechanical energy, this just means all of my sources of energy of motion, okay, mechanical just means motion, if I add all of these up, this will give me my total mechanical energy. And you'll see here that we could just cover this section right here, okay? So we could cover this, but I want to leave it in for right now. Um, and I'll tell you why. We already covered kinetic energy, right? So if we put this into our formula, we can find, okay, something that is moving has a certain amount of energy. If it is off the ground, if it is somewhere above the ground, let's say this ball is moving and it's above the ground, it also has some potential energy, right? So we'll add these two together, together to get our total mechanical energy. But you could have more sources of energy, things that we haven't covered yet. For example, if you have something that is loaded into a spring, right, then you have some um, potential energy from being loaded into a spring. You think of something is attached to a spring and it's crunched. As soon as you let it go, the spring will shoot it off, right? So you'll have this type of energy. You could also have energy that is rotational, right? If something is spinning, it also has some other energy that is not just linear kinetic energy, something that's just moving, something that's also spinning as it's moving has more energy, right? 
So there are lots of different types, but for now we're going to focus on these two main types in the course, right? Just know that any other types of energy that have to do with motion, we could add them into this um, energy total, right? Our total mechanical energy. And the way we use this is most notably in conservation of energy. So this is basically saying that if I have a system, and a system for me is usually a picture, just like we drew out here, if I have, let's say, a ball that is moving, okay, and it is above the ground, right? So it has some height above the ground. So this obviously has potential energy and kinetic energy, okay, based on its velocity. So what this is saying is that if you don't have any external influence, which for me, I usually just take this to mean that in my picture, nothing else comes in and messes with this ball. Of course, if somebody walks up and catches the ball, um, then they're going to add something new into the system. They're going to add something new into this picture, so this doesn't exactly hold. But as long as whatever we've drawn here in the beginning, if this ball is going through the air, it's not touching anything, nothing is messing with it, um, then we can consider that conservation of energy will hold, okay, for this system. Now, I'm just going to talk about just the system first, and we'll get into a little bit broader meaning of this later on. Now, this also means that we're not including friction. So if you think about um, the example that we talked about before, where we have a box and we've got a person and they push that box, right? So if you push a box, okay, you put some force along the ground, you're using your calories and you're putting that into the box to give it motion, right? But usually if you do this in the real world, once you stop pushing, then the box will also stop moving. It doesn't keep sliding with the energy that you've given it forever and ever, right? That is because friction is acting and it's taking away that energy. It's bleeding it off. As you're putting it in, friction is taking it away, okay? So in the absence of friction and external um, influences, it, let's say we have the ball going through the air, right? So pretty much anything in projectile motion that we've been doing in 2D motion, this law will hold where whatever my total energy is at any time, if I calculate it right here or up here or down here, it's always going to be the same exact number. Once it has a certain amount of energy, that will, that will never change, right? Until it hits the ground and, of course, you know, um, then the ground is now an external influence. So right now, we have the ball. Once it hits the ground, that ground will give it some external influence. So for us, the way we use this here, and this is the really uh, beneficial thing, is, I mean, let's say we had something like, okay, so we've got a ramp, and then, you know, somewhere on this ramp, like down here, we've got another ramp, Okay, and let's say we, we've got somebody, um, okay, this is a person, they're, ride, they're riding a motorcycle, all right, so this is a motorcycle, um, and they're going to they're gonna fly off the edge of this ramp, okay, and just, you know, just to put this, you know, in here, we can, we can also say that, um, you know, there are, like, a bunch of school buses in here and um, maybe this guy is going through a ramp and the, it's going through a hoop and the hoop is also on fire we can make this as complicated as we want to make it just basically is what I'm driving at here what's gonna happen is this guy on the motorcycle is gonna go up hopefully he's not gonna hit anything and then you know he's gonna come down here so basically uh, if we don't have friction, okay, if we don't consider friction in this scenario, then we could do all of this motion, we could describe all of this with our kinematics, right? We could do all of this, but that will take a lot of time and effort. What we need is we need the angle here, and then we'll have to split up into x and y, we'll have to do our kinematic formulas in x and y, uh, we're going to have to have maybe an angle here, 
Um, and then we're going to kind of transfer this down here, right? So we could do all this, but it's going to be very difficult. What we could do is we could take just the total energy, and all we would need to know is something like, what is the height here, and what is this initial velocity? Let's say when he flies off the ramp. If we know that, then we can do our total energy. So I'm going to call this e energy total. And I'm going to put a little I here just so you know it's the initial total energy. And this is going to equal to 1 half m v initial squared. Okay. And we'll do minus mass times gravity times height. I'll call this height initial as well, just so we have this. Okay, so we have some value here. So as long as we know the speed, the height, maybe our mass also, um, but we don't actually even need to know the mass, just so you know. We could add that in, but I'll show you right now that we actually don't need that. Um, if I know my initial velocity and my height, then I can have a value here for E total. Okay, and then let's say that my total energy final is going to be down here after he's like made it safely to the bottom of this ramp, right? And I just want to know, let's say, what is my final velocity? And I want to skip all of the intermediate stuff with the vectors and splitting things up and trigonometry and all that stuff. All I would need to do is say that at the end, okay, so I'll draw this here, maybe my final height is equal to zero, right? So we should know this because, you know, it's on the ground. Um, and then we can use that to find final velocity. Network. So I'll show you that we can do this. So if I do here one half mass times final velocity squared minus mass times gravity times my final height. Well, this is good. First of all, this right here is zero. So this whole thing goes away. Okay. And then I'm left with something pretty neat, right? Because of this condition right here, these two things have to be the same. This and this need to be the same. So since this is equal to this stuff and my final energy is equal to just this term right here, then I can put these two things together. I can set 1 half mv squared minus mgh equal to 1 half mv squared, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have, oh, you know what? I'll just cut this out and copy this. This is the nice part of working with technology like this. Okay. So I'll just set these two things equal to each other, okay? And remember I said you don't actually need to know the mass of this person, right? And the motorcycle and all that. Even if we don't know how much mass they have, that's okay. Because, what I'm going to do here, and I'll do this in a different color, um, I have mass right here, mass right here, and mass right here. All of my terms have mass, correct? Well, that's a little... So... All of my terms have mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide all of my terms by mass. Okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the mass terms from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by mass. Okay? So we can do that here. These will cancel and this will cancel. It's really great because this is really good because what's going to happen now is that now that these things have canceled what I'm left with here and I'll do this in purple is one half the initial squared minus gravity times my initial height will equal to one half times my final velocity squared right so this very simple formula remember we know what these two things are. We know my initial velocity and initial height. Um, I'll just plug these in and I can solve for my final velocity. It doesn't matter 
what kind of craziness happened here in between, right? So this is the really nice thing with working with conservation of energy is that we get to take out the direction part of this. I don't care about the directions I'm moving because energy isn't a vector. It doesn't have directions. It only has magnitude. It only has an amount. And since that amount is staying constant, then we can exploit that to make a lot of really difficult problems much easier if we don't care about the directions.